Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back. It's Infamous NYC coming back with another video. It's been a while. I've been busy. For those that don't know, I do work as a nurse. Um, so it's been kind of uh, very busy for me, as you would imagine. Uh, so I haven't had a lot of time for putting out content or for streaming. I am off for the next couple of weeks, so I'm going to be putting out quite a bit of content. have the opportunity to do a little bit of streaming on the other night. But this particular video is designed around Melee Magblade. Uh, I came across a post here on the forums, and it's called Help! Magic and Nightblade Viability. Build Viability. And of course, this is by Deus Vault. He says, he says, hello everyone. He says, I recently came back to the game and I chose to play something I've always want. I always wanted to do back in 2018, which is Magblade. It says, the issue is, is that I find myself is that I wish I, I want to play a, a melee variant. I must admit, most of the reason involved in, in this are the aesthetics, which is why I play me melee Magblade primarily is because it just looks much cooler than running a Destro Resto build. Kind of gives you that... Magica, like as he says, he says, I just want to, uh, I says, just think, he says, I just think the dual wield fan, uh, phantom ish assassin um, in the, is the way to be for this class. He says, currently I'm just level 45, so he's just getting started. Um, and he's trying to find out whether melee magblade in a PvP setting is viable. He says, I've been leveling through PvP alone. Good for you. At least I'll learn the class. And of course, that is a viable way. Of leveling, it says um, sometimes I have huge, huge success. Sometimes I cannot make a dent in anyway. I have a mix of wizards repost, so he's running a damage reduction set. I think wizards also has region attached to it, and he wrote king slayer. I think he meant knight slayer. Um, and he says here, and I have around 2,300 spell damage, 2,200 recovery, and 35k max magic. <coughs> Excuse me. He says I'm geared pretty well, um, I suppose. So I don't really, I don't, I do not really struggle with Magic Region because of the PvP hots I use for Region as well. Obviously, I use the melee spammable. He's talking about concealed, and overall, it's a huge and it is legit experience. The issue that I have is that every high level pro Magblade I see on YouTube uses a Destro Resto setup. So I want to know if there's any way that melee Magblade is viable at max level. And if there's anything that I can do uh, to take the build to the max, is any reasoning for it says any reasoning for another more viable build is appreciated as well. Thank you in advance. So this build, so this video goes out to Deus Vault, uh, talking a little bit about the melee melee magblade and what makes melee magblade very viable. I'm just gonna go over here and go to my my setup but i'm talking about what i what i what my setup for melee magblade um, is between lotus fam the change that i made to my melee magblade was the introduction of lotus fan primarily for the gap closer secondarily for the minor vulnerability and of course it's a minor vulnerability to everyone who is affected by the dot for uh, within six meters so if you gap close to multiple to an opponent and there are other people around him um, anybody within six meters will be affected by the dot and of course is affected by the minor vulnerability of course my main spammable is concealed your main form of crowd control is going to be mass hysteria and then your more i would say semi-reliable burst is going to come from merciless and then I reintroduced, I had been wanting to, because I played a, a, a little bit of a variant, and I used Mage Light. Um, so I removed Mage Light for this particular build, and I added in Reaper's Mark. Reaper's Mark gives you the pen that you need. It gives you both the Magicka pen as well as the physical pen, so that your dual wield light and heavy attacks will deal 8% more damage. I chose dual wield because dual wield, especially when your opponent gets low or when your opponent is stunned, do your do wield light and heavies will deal more damage. The other thing is that Reaper's Mark gives you also access to Major Berserk. So Major Berserk says um, you gain Major Berserk increases your damage by 25% for five seconds. And of course, this is what happens when the target dies. So if you're fighting multiple opponents, 
having Reaper's Mark on your bar is very beneficial because if you have one particular opponent who's weaker than the other, and when you burst, if, you, if you're able to burst that opponent down without utilizing your ultimate, let's just say you're able to kind of dot them up and then whittle them down and then stun into a spectral bow, then you can save your ultimate for the next person. And of course, that ultimate will deal more damage. You've got five seconds um, to kind of pepper in as much damage as you can and to try to set up for another burst combo. The other thing is that it also gives you access. Um, one, it's free. It's twenty. It's uh, 50 meters. The other thing is that it gives you access to the, the burst heal. So this is something that I pay attention to when, um, as a way of healing because people are like, Mag, Mag Blade, you know, they need a burst heal. Well, you have one, but it's revolving around the type of way that the class is designed to play, which is around single target bursting. Right, so, so you have to pick your one. You have the opportunity if you use cloak. You have the opportunity to choose what fights you engage in. But that if that fight isn't going your way, you can utilize cloak to get to get out of that fight. Typically, I said when I did use cloak that typically on a mag blade, even on I say on a stand blade, you die when you make a mistake. It's kind of very forgiving, kind of like. Mag Sork, where if the fight doesn't go your way, you can kind of just streak away. But if that person has a gap closer, it makes it a little bit harder. But typically on a Nightblade, because of the utilization of Cloak, you can kind of get away from a lot of fights that maybe didn't go your route. Or you can kind of re reset, the reset fights much more easily than a lot of other classes can. So I think this actually works really well because it gives you that risk reward. And I'm always about maintaining proper risk reward when it comes to pvp if you don't ha if, if mainly if magblade had a high burst heal it would be broken it deals way too much damage and on top of that would have a, and on top of that it would have a burst heal it'd be broken kind of like templar how, how templar is broken um and how templar should be in my opinion should be magplar should be scaled back because it deals way too much damage and it has a burst heal and it has a clip that's that's another video and another story and so um the other thing that I switched off to was I wasn't using Soul Harvest. One, it is dodgeable. Two, um, I didn't have room for it. I realistically didn't have room for it, primarily because of the passive. Because I needed a shadow, I needed a siphoning ability on my front bar uh, to take advantage of Magicka Flood. So I could have run, I could have run something else, but there wasn't anything that I wanted on my front bar, right? Looking at my, looking at this is on my back bar, this is on my back bar, this is on my back bar. Um, drain power, I, in my opinion, wasn't worth using, and of course, healthy offering is for support. So there really wasn't anything that I wanted that that would weave specifically well on my front bar outside of Soul Tether, which is why I went Soul Tether. The other reason that I went Soul Tether is because um, it gives you access, one, to AoE Burst, two, it, it's an AoE CC, so if you're getting pressured by multiple people, um, it's it's also very uh, useful so that you can save your Magicka resource for something else. And then three, it also provides you with Burst Heal, which was a change in the previous patch, as well as giving you access to healing over time. And so when you're fighting multiple opponents, having a little bit of extra HP recovery that's, that's happening every second for eight seconds can be very helpful. I'll link some gameplay where I kind of... Uh, where I kind of show myself taking advantage of that, um, you can take a look at that. So that's kind of why I, I made my front bar this way. At, with Do Wield, uh, why I liked Do Wield was because, of course, through, you know, looking at the passives increases your uh, damage with Do Wield abilities by 20% against enemies that are under 25%. And this includes both your light and your heavy attacks. This passive affects your light and heavy attacks. So when you're fighting someone and they're starting to get lower, you start to deal more damage with your light and heavy attacks. Um, it increases the damage of your off weapon, and since the damage from do wield is based off of your um, your weapon damage, this is why this particularly comes into play in terms of the passive, so that your light and your heavies will deal more damage, as well as of course ruffian. Um, it says it gives you 50%. Uh, damage bonus when attacking someone who is stunned, immobilized, disoriented, or silenced. And so when you when you CC somebody with a mass hysteria, and then you then um, hit wind up for either a heavy attack or if you just light attack an animation cancel into a conceal, that um, that light attack now gains the bonus from ruffian, which is why I always tell people that to make sure you take al al almost all the passive except for controller, which is to reduce the amount of um, your skill cost and so, so we're not using any skills there's no point in having this passive the other passive that works out really well 
is of course um, running two swords. So each sword increases your damage done by uh, 3%, right? So you get an additional 6% to everything on your front bar, which of course includes your ultimate, it includes your heal or your burst from Merciless, and of course your concealed, and as well as gaining access to an additional 6% damage from Lotus. The other reason that I liked, so just for slotting these two abilities, it's 16% extra damage. And so that's why it's really important to when you're when you're setting up your burst that you really want to make sure that your, your opponent has both Reaper's Mark as well as Lotus Fan. Sometimes it's like rotating through all these different um, debuffs and buffs. Um, it really takes a bit of rem uh, remembering, muscle memory, learning, uh, making sure you're kind of like working through a rotation so that you're maximizing the amount of the amount of damage on my back bar. Um, of course, we need some sort of access to uh, major sorcery, and I get that through degeneration. And of course, it acts like uh, an additional dot, gives you a little bit of extra magic recovery on the back bar, as well as increases your max magic on the back bar. Front bar, um, I particularly use Swallow Soul like I did on my previous build, kind of like a buff. So I could either have run um, on the resto, I could either have chose to run Rapid Regen. Rapid Regen doesn't necessarily mean that I will get it. Um, because it, it it'll it'll either give it to you or to a nearby ally, so there's a chance that you might not get it. Plus, I wanted something that I could weave, so I stuck with Swallow Soul. But um, either either variant, if you run around solo, you can utilize Rapid Regen without without an issue. Um, uh, I'm not using uh, Invis Cloak. I'm using Dark Cloak, so it gives me access to another heal over time, as well as giving me access to Minor Protection. And of course, the passive is that it gives me more HP on, on the on the back bar, um, and then of course I'm using um, debilitate. Um, I use food, or I think originally I was going to use um, what's it called, uh, clockwork, and I just I decided to run food um, to see if I needed uh, the regen, and I didn't. So I just utilized. I found debilitate to be more than enough, and then of course my main issue was making sure that I had enough stamina. The CC break because my stamina pool was like slightly lower and my stamina region was slightly lower. And I do block, I do dodge roll fa fairly often. Um, so especially as a ma as a melee magic build, you're putting yourself in harm's way. You're going to be blocking more. You're going to be actively um, dodge rolling more. And of course, you're going to be CC'd a lot easier um, because you one, you don't have cloak. Two, you're within melee range. So you need to have enough forms of stamina regen. Um, one, you can get that from a, from two wield heavy attacks because you're 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 heavy attacking with a uh, melee weapon. So that's one way that you gain access to more stamina. And of course, I chose to use um, leeching strikes. Plus, it gives you a little bit of HP over time, so that while you're weaving either on the back bar or on your front bar, um, it'll give you a little bit of HP recovery. And then, of course, at the end, when the you, you can either reuse it. And then roll dodge a little bit and then kind of reuse it again and either proc it so that it gives you extra stamina return or at the very end it'll give you extra stamina when the ability runs out my back bar i chose to use bolstering um for pvp people you know it gives you i, I do a lot of battlegrounds and i primarily do um death matches the vast majority of the, 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 of the battlegrounds that i do are primarily death match. and so i chose originally i used the other morph um, of bolstering um, on my other variant that I played um, but uh, for this one I, I wanted a little bit more group play and so for group play it's good if you're either coming into a fight or you realize that uh, maybe your teammates are a little bit squishier than you would like it kind of gives you a little bit it have, gives you access to major protection so it gives you access to major protection as well as your entire group and of course it also gives you uh, a very nice synergy that I think most people are just not skilled enough to utilize um it would work really well in group play it's the only ability in the game that would give everybody who uses the synergy invisibility and it gives them both an invisibility increases their movement speed by 70 percent and gives them a heal over time uh, over four seconds but a lot of people don't use it primarily because most people don't use um, bolstering that they don't even recognize it. It's like one of those abilities that probably don't get utilized. And that's unfortunate because it's a really good ability and I think most people completely underestimate uh, its usefulness. But I typically use it fairly often in Battlegrounds when either we're getting pressured or if I feel we're going to go into um, 
two teams and I want everybody to have major protection, I'll drop it down in front of them and then give everybody access to major protection. Um, as, the, as it lasts, the, one of the changes is it says, um, it says snares enemies by 70% and granting you and your allies major protection while inside the ring. And even after leaving it, it says reducing damage. So that lasts 18 seconds. So it's a really long uptime. Uh, for major protection it's not as typically good as the wardens the wardens will just kind of move right through you so you have to pay attention to where to where you drop the ability typically if it's like a choke point i'll drop it i'll drop the ability i don't even i actually don't even have the ultimate i don't even have i don't even have enough for an ult uh, i'll typically drop it like at a choke point or if i see like we're getting some line of sight and i'll line of sight and i'll drop it right on top of my team so they have access to it because i know i'm gonna have i know i don't need my ultimate to secure kills on my melee mag blade um, but it is good to have if you're fighting against like a more competent player or if you're fighting outnumbered primary problems that i have with the melee mag blade class more revolve around um the cast time on the ultimate which is the biggest one of the biggest problems um and then the lack of a decent execute because impale is kind of shitty and then of course originally i used um and originally i used the other morph um, of debilitate cripple and that had gave me access to major expedition so i don't have access um, to major expedition on this build what i would say is in terms of race choice for melee magblade i would really recommend going nord or what will more than likely happen is that you'll end up having to utilize one of your um, sets as a uh, damage reduction set or you might have to use a two-piece helm for damage reduction. So I chose to go Nord uh, for one. It gives you a little bit of extra HP, which you're going to need for a melee build. Um, the cold resistance is okay. Um, the immunity resistance to the chill status effect is good. Um, if there's like ice wardens or anybody who is like utilizing ice, it's not so much important. But when I first made this class, when I first made this class, it definitely was because everybody played ice warden. Everybody was spamming ice on the ground. Occasionally, you will come across somebody, and so it helps you avoid the minor maim that comes with the chill status effect, as well as the root that comes with anybody use utilizing wall of elements. Stalwork is really good because it gives you extra 1500 stamina, and that's actually pretty good because you're going to need that extra stamina for situational dodge rolling, uh, blocking, and as well as CC breaking. So I would say that the extra um, stamina is well worth it, especially on a melee magic a class, kind of like DK. Like DKs typically stack a bit more... Um, stack a bit more uh, stamina than other classes primarily because they block at CC break and they have a situational roll dodge. The other thing, of course, that I like is... Um, Stalwart now gives um, five ultimate every 10 seconds. Originally, why I chose this build was because it gave HP recovery. My old build um, was my HP recovery build. Let me see if I can pull it up here real quick. So my old, uh, my old magic, my old melee magic and night blade was here. We go. I believe this is it. Yeah, so this was my this was my old melee magic and blade build that I ran, and so originally it had a lot of HP recovery, and on this of course this is a no CP build, um, so I had like 2,200 without a pot, uh, and then with a pot it was like almost 2,500 on a cloak knight blade, um, and I and I typically utilized uh, shadowy disguise in that one, and that was a really fun build. That was way back when cripple still had. Um, access to major expedition and of course with the removal of major expedition i had to switch off to um, either channel acceleration or race against time etc on this particular build that i'm running uh, let me go back let's go to my builds on this particular build so you can kind of see what it looks like fully buffed which is let's pull this one up right here a clever mag blade so this is this build for no cp um fully buffed up you can see it, it does hit quite a bit harder uh, maxed out we have i think it's almost 10k but i think that's with um reaper's mark let me just double check that i think that is with reaper's mark but in any event um for no cp this this build that which doesn't rely on cloak does hit um much harder on so let me just finish oh let me finish going back to um uh the nord so the the extra alt gen, of course, when you take damage, you're gonna gain a little bit of alt, which is good. Um, Night blade, of course, whenever you're utilizing a something like a swallow soul, or debilitate, or using uh, leeching, you're gonna gain access to the passive, which gives you an extra 
uh, extra three old. And then, of course, whenever you pop a pot, you're going to have access to... You're going to have access to extra old gen. So since the alts that I'm using are a bit more expensive than Soul Harvest, when I, when I was utilizing Soul Harvest, it really wasn't that important because it's such a cheap ultimate. You have it up fairly quickly um, that you really don't gain access too much to the Stalwart passive for the extra alt gen. But on this particular build, it is definitely worth having. I just want to double check something. I think that is with major... Uh, maybe it's not. Major Berserk. Actually, it's not. That's not with Major Berserk. Okay, so um, fully buffed. We are at 97, almost 98, almost 9,800 effective spell power. So it is quite a bit stronger um, than my other build. And of course, when you do secure a kill you in a no CP, your effective spell power goes up to almost 12,000. So very, very strong. A uh, very hard-hitting build. And so finishing this up. And then, of course, originally the uh, the Rugged Passive was 6%. Uh, 6% just straight mitigation. I think it was kind of bugged. But the reason that I liked it, it was also because a lot of people were utilizing the two-handed ult and two-handed ult OP. Um, thankfully, it's been brought down um, to a little bit more respectable damage. Um, but you still gain the extra physical as well as spell resistance and that 3960 is let me see i think it's about five percent 3960 divided by 660 puts you at six percent so it's six it's still six percent uh just mitigation so this is kind of like why i went with my setup so in talking about um what i utilize i do utilize two slime crawl uh, to bring back the minor berserk um, and of course, the extra critical in no CP works out really well. The sturdy works out fine because I do situationally block divines. I'm not too worried about. Gives me access to a little bit more of my passive, and I'm util utilizing um, the atro for the extra magic and recovery. It gives me access to 100% uptime on minor berserk. And then, of course, I'm using Ancient Dragon Guard. Ancient Dragon Guard, I think, works really well, uh, especially on a melee setup, because you'll have the extra spell damage as well as weapon damage, right? So it adds weapon damage and spell damage. And like I said before, because you're utilizing uh, Dew Wield as your primary, uh, your primary weapons for dealing damage, you, the extra, um, the extra weapon damage is, of course, welcome, because. That was one thing that was lacking on my previous build. My previous build really didn't have decent weapon damage. So my weapon damage uh, was so low that my light attacks really didn't hit that hard. So in this particular setup, I'm, I have 3400. Not fantastic, but much better than it was before. And then of course, I, um, when, you're, when, you, when you get a little bit lower, um, you gain access to additional physical and spell resistance when you're below 50%, which is really good because most of my healing comes from healing over time. So when I start to get a little bit low, the extra resistance kicks in and of course if i'm fighting multiple opponents that is better than the actual spell damage that you would get uh, because it's reducing everybody else's damage i do have to finish golding out this set and then the other set that i'm using is uh clever so i have access to clever alchemist on the back bar um, and then i'm using do wield uh willpower with nern and sharpened for the extra penetration i think that's kind of one of the changes that makes the build um hit a bit harder with um flame damage glyph so it, the flame glyph will hit a little bit harder because of the extra pen and then i also have extra pen because i'm in light and then of course i have extra pen because of reaper's mark so it's quite a bit of extra penetration that helps both um for kind of like eking, eking out as much damage and of course um the glyph on the back bar and of course on the front bar i'm utilizing um, another glyph for magic of recovery um, and of course a little bit of extra magic damage you i kind of went with whatever whatever you're missing is what i would is what i would recommend and then in terms of the uh, the glyph in terms of the the glyphs i did go um two max two arcane one with magic recovery the other one is a fused pot i still have to gold this out i would i do recommend um golding this out so that it rounds up to the eight seconds to maximize the amount of uptime on Clever Alchemist. And then of course I do have to finish um, maxing this one out for the infused stamina recover. recovery. So I went two infused, uh, actually two infused, I didn't really, I did. I went two infused, one with stamina recovery to make sure that I have enough stamina uh, for CC breaking, for blocking, roll dodging. So I do roll dodge quite a bit on my build. And so once, if, I, if I'm, I try to make sure I pay attention to 
um, when leeching strikes, so that if my stamina is a little bit low, and I'm thinking I'm not going to have just enough base recovery um, for the next CC break, I'll just utilize it right afterwards. So if I'm like really, really low, let's say if I had a CC break in that dodge roll, and then I had a block, maybe I had a block of meteor, and then CC break because I got streaked, and, then I, and I'm quite low, I'll just utilize that and then go right back into my land attack rotation to quickly build up primarily the stamina, or I'll just switch over to my dual wheel bar and I'll immediately heavy attack to make sure that I have enough stamina for uh, the next setup. So just look, kind of looking at it fully, fully buffed up, this is basically with the glyph and the clever proc. You're just shy of, um, just shy of. I'll take off the major berserk. Just shy of the 4K spell damage. And so you pretty much is like almost. I only have 15 seconds down um, on the clever. I only, only have 15 seconds down on the clever because of the change to clever alchemist, uh, and that's of course why I went with the infused. You want to go with the infused pot. Of course, this also gives you extra recovery, and then of course. Um, I went Magicka and then infused stamina. So fully buffed up, you can see my stamina recovery, uh, my mag recovery, and this of course is with, with a pot. And then 1400 is enough, you gain another 300 um, from debilitate as well as, you know, the extra uh, that you'll get from even heavy attack with a resto, resto on your back part. I think that's about it. Um, you can feel, I'm, I'll probably post a clip, but you can always check it out. Of course, on my YouTube, I did post um, both this build a little bit more in depth discussing this build. But I did want to discuss um, this person was looking for a viable melee magblade. The other thing that I did want to touch on was something that, of course, is a problem within the PvP community is what people say right here. It says, if you want to be a dual-wield melee magblade, it says, I'd go with Kalorians and Zons. And this is the primary problem um, with ESO in a nutshell, where literally the, the developer developer deals the damage for you, right? This is all developer damage. Because the only thing that you're required to do is you're required to light attack. And both of these proc off of a light attack, which is free. And it does ridiculous amounts of damage between the Kalorians and then, of course, uh, the Zons that follows afterwards. And if you don't have the ability to streak away, or cleanse, you're gonna eat a lot of damage from that Zons, and of course the Kalorians does a lot of a lot more damage when of course you hit somebody with a Soul Harvest because the Soul Harvest gives you access to an additional 20%. So that means both proc sets deal an additional 20% more damage, not including if you're running things like Lotus Fan, and of course if you were running things like Reaper's Marks, which gives you access to an additional 16% damage, which of course affects um, excuse me, uh it, it does affect the amount of damage that proc sets do, as well as the major berserk that comes right after it. So if you actually did set up where you secured a kill um, and put a lotus fan into a reaper's a reaper's mark um, into and then soul harvested your next opponent, it, it'd be like 25 plus an additional. It's 45 and then another 16%. So that's like 61% extra damage from the proc sets. And this is why I don't recommend people playing this way, because it's literally, literally the developer is the one that's securing the kills. It's not you. And so you can never tell whether or not a class uh, has issues in terms of things that are missing from the kit, whether it's something missing in this particular kit or whether other people's kits are too strong um, when you're utilizing things uh, like proxies. It's just my personal thing. I don't utilize them. Um, I primarily stay away from the vast majority of proxies in ESO, especially uh, when it comes to PvP, I try to stay away from them. But anyway, if you have any more questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section. This this video was a little bit longer than I had planned, but I just wanted to make I wanted to make sure that I was as, as thorough as possible. And of course, you could always check me out um, on Twitch on Infamous, Infamous NYC. I'll leave all that down in the comment section. And of course, I'll put a little little gameplay into this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys are having having a great day. Take care. God bless. Stay safe.